So, Jeff, I'm going to set up your fascinating interview and piece with Henry Kissinger by the previous piece you did, the other, Got Attention Around the World, which the, were these hours and hours you spent with Barack Obama. Tell us how that piece several months ago led to the piece in this next issue. It's funny because I had heard right after that piece came out from mutual acquaintances that Henry Kissinger was making comments about the piece. So, of course, I, you know, I, I, I called and said, uh, hey, I'd love to hear, you know, I'd love to hear directly what you're thinking about, and I, I realized that I should take our conversations and put them on the record. It's fast, especially on issues related to management of great power. If, if, if there's anything you need to know about Henry Kissinger is that he is a player, even at the age of 93, and wants to be a player. My encounter with him as a much younger person is when I was the um, the editor of the Lefty Campus newspaper, and he was the professor going to work for Nixon. So we started in, in literally in '68. Yeah, '68 yeah. and '69. Yeah, yeah, so this yeah. was a we, we started off on the wrong foot. But I've come to admire his statesmanship. One other thing that motivates him is his relentless desire to convince you that he's right, that his record, properly understood, is uh, that that he behaved well and he defended American interests well, and he was not responsible for the perfidious things that his critics claim he's responsible for. Henry Kissinger, with his view of the long arc of world evolution and, and American policy, and Barack Obama having presented his version of the long arc to you, what was Henry Kissinger's basic judgment of whether Obama was legitimate in the arc he had presented? Henry Kissinger does not believe that the moral arc of the universe is long but bends toward justice. Mm -hmm. Kissinger believes that one of Obama's key faults is that he divorces power from diplomacy. Yes. But when the president is arguing about credibility, yeah. that American deterrent credibility is overrated uh, as, a, as a concept, as a tool, right. um, this, was, this was a shot at Kissinger, who, of course, in the general understanding of Vietnam, came in with Nixon, realized that he had to ramp up the war yes. in order to end the war. President Obama finds the logic of that, uh, it, the logic escapes him, let's say. By the way, the single most interesting part of this to me is the historical echo that I heard that John Kerry over the last two years had been going to President Obama and saying, for the sake of our credibility, we have to bomb Bashar al-Assad. Yes. We have to put real military pressure on the Assad regime and that will get them to come to the negotiating table. And the president is saying, no, John, we're not gonna do that. Don't you remember Kissinger? Right. That, that, that counts as heavy. What do you think might have been different in the last eight years of foreign policy if Obama had involved Kissinger more? There's more Kissinger in Obama than Obama would acknowledge, mm -hmm. and there's more Kissinger in Obama than Kissinger probably knows. Yeah. Kissinger, what Kissinger would have told Obama is that, that we don't have yet a proper understanding of where China envisions itself, mm -hmm. and they don't understand us either. He, he, he points out that in the early 70s, when he went to Beijing secretly, there was nothing to talk about. There's no bilateral relationship. And so all they did was talk about their theories of history. Now, when an American president meets the Chinese leader, there's so much to do mm -hmm. from cyber to trade to South China Sea to everything that is on the agenda. We're talking about practical stuff all the time and so you might have to carve out a lot more time mm -hmm. than you've carved out and you have to have you have to have serious high-end conversations about the way the world is organized because you you're the guys who are going to decide how the world is organized if henry kissinger became national security advisor what's the essential point he'd make about the long view towards china the reality is china for 11 of the past 13 centuries has been the most powerful country on earth. It's about to become, at some point in the future, somewhere on par with the United States in terms of global power. He would say to the, to the President of the United States, understand how they understand the world. Other countries are mere tributaries of the central kingdom. You don't have to accept that as a moral principle. You have to accept that as the reality of their perception of the world. It's easy and satisfying to say we should, we should spend a lot more time arguing for Tibet. And I agree with that. Like, we should stand up for what's right. But this is the realpolitik. This is the amoral realpolitik is acknowledge their greatness, yeah. acknowledge their own understanding of their greatness, and figure out a way to keep the earth stable. And you are the two parties that can keep the earth stable. That's to deal with it as it is and, and, and protect our interests, but not push us toward needless confrontation.